Hi, welcome back to Wild Speculations. I'm Daniel. I'm Scott. This week we talk about Critical Role Campaign 3, Episode 18, A Hungry Jungle. Yes. A shorter episode than we've been getting. Yeah, I think Critical Role Stats had it as the second shortest episode of the campaign. Yeah. Um, good episode, though. Yeah, uh, interesting. Start off with our combat. Right, which we knew was happening. I yeah. mean... Uh, Roll initiative. Who's awake? Who's surprised? Mm -hmm. uh, or maybe not. Surprise might not be the right word. Um, who's awake? Who's delayed? Yeah. Uh, and so, a couple things off the bat that were kind of missed. Um, Matt never really asks who's sleeping in their armor. No. Um, I, I don't think that's a thing that they, a mechanic they use. No. Uh, but, Aura says he picks up his sword and shield. It's an action to don or doff a shield. Yeah. Uh, does it change anything? Not really, in this instance. Uh, I mean, there were plenty of times it would have changed things in campaign two between Jester and Caduceus. Yeah, well, I mean... Um, he wouldn't have got off his first attack. True. Had he used his action instead of dashing to don the shield. True. Um, but the other, one of the things that Matt did that made it sort of confusing was he didn't have everybody roll initiative at once. Yeah. Um, and... Lucky, unlucky for them. Depends on how you want to look at it. <laughs> they didn't roll great on initiative, except for a couple of them rolled decent. Yeah. No one rolled and great. Everyone rolled decent. Yeah. And everyone who rolled waking up rolled worse than the person waking them up. So Matt let them have a turn. Whereas if everyone had rolled, mm -hmm. you could really get the sense of they're missing out on the combat. Because if they had rolled well, whatever, or someone asleep goes before someone who's awake, yeah. they're definitely missing out on their turn. Um, and the surprised condition is you can't take actions or reactions until your turn is over. Mm -hmm. Then you can take reactions. Um, so... Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's one of those things that almost nobody does it exactly right. Because yeah. there's so many different versions yeah. of surprise rounds. All the, di all the different editions of the game had some different way of doing it. Yeah. Um, so, and some people just don't do it, or they do a slapdash where if you're surprised, you don't get it, you don't yeah. go the first turn at all, which isn't rules as written accurate, but still gets the idea that, yeah, you know, uh, I wanted to give Laura. MVP. Yeah. Immediately. <laughs> With rules lawyering? Yeah. Yeah. Just so I so good. I mean, it was pivotal. Yeah. For one. Like it was a big deal that she got it. But also, yeah. I'm not targeting the same creature, I'm targeting objects. 
and that look is like, mm, okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and 10 D8 damage yeah. is was significant. It was huge. Um, so I had a question, and I guess this combat kind of spurred it, though it's kind of been right there for a while. How long before we go to the Feywild? There are too many things directly from the Feywild going on. We've got lycanthropes, and while those aren't exclusively from the Feywild, they are from the, you know, they are a thing in the Feywild. We've got Fern. We've got the Chromatic Rose, which is from Wild Beyond the Witchlight book. Yeah. Uh, we've got this, whatever Fey Anglerfish thing was. Um, you know, there, there's just a ton of, you know, and we've been talking about it this whole campaign, the connections. Well, to the elemental planes and the Feywild, but specifically the Feywild, you know. I mean, is that... It's got to be coming. Level 8, maybe? I want to say 10, just because that's the first that they're going to have... Plane shift. How many times do they wait till they have the ability of a night? Almost every time. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I think we'll see it sooner. I mean, Matt I mean, certainly has the doorways and gateways. We, we've established, yeah, I was going to say, we've established doorways and gateways. And yeah. ferns use them. Yes. Um,. It's not until they go to uh, Ankarel. Yeah, it's after Ankarel. Which is probably 10 episodes away at least. Okay. Depending on what exactly they do and how long it takes in the Heartmore. Yeah. Um, yeah, what? Well, like the Heartmore arc could be done in three episodes or. It could be five or seven. Yeah. Um, so. Then, of course, there's always the do they visit the Nether Deep while they're in Ankarel? Because that's where that is the the portal to that. Do, do they tease the Nether Deep in Kale Moro, the sunken city? That leads to the Nether Deep. Probably, since Matt dropped some of the Nether Deep lore in the episode. Yeah. When they were investigating the battlefield, as it were. Um, so maybe. And then we get into Ruidium items and corruption and. Yeah, I mean. No, yes, they will go to the Nether Deep. And, and is that a uh, is the way to get back at the players with the Vex and Vax and all the similar names, Ruidium and Residual? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why they came up with Residuum for refined Whitestone. Ruidium... Is be, it's not directly connected to Ruidus, but it's the people who named it that named it because it was the same color as that boot. Hmm. Spoiler alert for those of you who are going to play uh, Call of the Nether Deep. The Ruidium is explained in there. Yeah. Um. Well, it could also just be because it's from the stars as well, mm. you know. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I think well, 
Well, Residuum is a fourth edition sort of holdover. And I think even Pathfinder has it. Hmm. Um, so I think that was just a way to put it into Exandria. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, I think... Because we've now got two Feywild stones, crystals, chips. Yeah. Uh, Shards, fragments, whatever. Yeah. That in and of itself seem to be extra planar to the Feywild yeah. in some way. Yeah. Uh, and I think, I, I expect we will have more cosmology in this campaign. Oh, yeah. Uh, which we said very early on. Yeah. Um, I'm still betting, especially with the Chetney connection, we end up visiting Uthadurn and then that Cobalt Soul scholar who was doing the study on the moons. Well, I mean, we don't have to go there. He could be in... He could be, but... On Corral. Going there would be a logical stop on the way to Aeor if they find out about Aeor and they're tracking down Vern's parents. Yeah. I mean, with it virtually being on the way and being where Chetney is from. It makes... Except... If they end up going there... Chetney can't really go back there. And I think Fern, once she finds out what happened to Aeor, and then it blew up out of the sky, I don't think she needs to go there. That's that's a 50-50. Either she loses hope and doesn't need to go there, or she freaks out and has to find out the fate of her parents and has to go there. Hmm. And maybe I just don't see. I don't see us going back there. Um, I think if we go anywhere, it's going to be Sengorn. That's fair. Because um, that's where they know a portal to the Feywild is. Yeah. Rather than, I mean, they could try to trek through all the Odiran wilds to try to find whatever. Connection to the Fey Wilds here. Uh, yeah, and it's but unless they get a a good clue as to where it would be, they're not gonna. Which may be what the Loomis twins were looking for. Yeah. Uh, and we got some interesting role interactions with that mm -hmm. uh, near the end. Uh, anyway, not to derail the talk of the combat or the episode, <laughs> but too late. <laughs> uh, FCG advertises the benefits of therapy. Yeah. That's because um, we talked. <sighs> I'm not sure... I don't know. I don't. I don't appreciate the tone of that because yes, they've talked, but they haven't really gotten in. Like the number of combats we've had mm -hmm. are pretty low, and I think. It's potentially bad to sell your therapy on uh, it will make you a better fighter. Yeah. I mean... I think... 
Engage in therapy with me, and I'll ensure you get PTSD. <laughs> Just like me. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, goading attack kind of saves the day, but also didn't really do much at the same time. Like, the creature was still attacking other things other than Orum. Yeah. Um, and part of me... There's a lot of things that I think were happening behind the screen in the, in the fight mm -hmm. that well, I, I, Matt was pulling punches. Yeah. I'm not sure that there's a mechanic that makes it to where you can't attack other things. Compelled duel, I think. No, I think that still is just disadvantage. Huh. I don't think it... Like, it makes them want to fight you, but it's like they have disadvantage to do anything else. Hmm. Um, yeah. And regardless, a battle master is going to have compelled duel. Yeah. Um, but... I mean, disadvantage to attack others is huge. Yeah. Um, that was just rolling pretty well. Yeah. And hitting most everybody that he attacked. Uh, and when Matt's like, it's first legendary action. Yeah. And they, pre wait, this is, a, you know, and he has to explain the legendary actions and... <laughs> Legendary resistance are two different things. Well, and they, yeah, they don't make it a legendary creature. It's just a way for the DM to yeah. balance the action economy. Yeah. Which perhaps leads more weight to Colville's uh, fill in actions, I think is what he called them. Uh, to the yeah. renaming of it. Yeah. Um, but. I mean, six, one, half dozen. Uh, it's, it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't matter what you call it. Yeah. You know. It, it balances out the table so that players don't just walk over the monster. Correct. Uh, and really, arguably, any creature that you're, you've set up to be solo against the party should have them. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, Especially once they hit 5th level or higher. Yeah. Once once extra attack kicks in, or 3rd level spells, if it's only one or two people, they almost need legendary actions. Yeah. Uh, or they're going to do so much damage, hit so hard, Yeah. you're going to be basically playing 1st through 3rd level characters. Because yeah. one or two hits and you're going to be at 0 hit points. Uh, Travis had to pay the bonus action tax mm -hmm. for the Blood Hunter. Um, yep. Because he yeah. had the first round bonus action change. Yeah, second the round. Borrowing uh, Laudan's aesthetic. <laughs> she gets, hey, wait, body horror is my thing. Well, I. And she even called him a bitch for it. So body horror is my thing, bitch. At the same time, I also enjoyed her reaction. Yeah, no, no. She was all for it, but I just thought it was funny that she... Yeah. She she was obviously like, yes, this is cool. Let's just make a party of body horror. We've, we've got the guy with the caved-in skull. We've got the undead girl. We've got the guy that rips his skin off to transform. Let's do this. Yeah. Uh, I have a question for you. Okay. Do you know why Orum readied his attack action for FCG to carve a pizza slice out of the creature? I don't. Because that confused the hell out of me. 
Yeah. Because he moved to flank, so he's already has advantage. I don't understand why. Unless he wanted to do some cool combo thing, but generally you have to sort of spell that out ahead of time. Yeah. Um, and we didn't get that. Uh, I think my favorite aside joke of the episode was uh, when Ladna is... By the way, because of daylight savings and everything, I missed the first hour because I didn't change my alarm on my phone. And the part that I came in at was when Ladna was dying. I was like, ooh. I was like, wait. Because I thought I was only 10 minutes late. I was like, for her to be dying 10 minutes in. is, And then I was like, oh, no. You missed the first half. Anyway, that's the part that I came in at was when she was doing all oh, yeah. her undead stuff. Yeah. And she's like, I'm made of paper, but I'm really hard to kill. Uh, but they were joking about Whitestone Andy. And Liam's like, yeah, he's the next rope over. Yeah, because she's like, did you see his <laughs> cameo in Legend of Fox Machina? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we get scritches for Chetney. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was funny to see Travis try to I'm shaking his leg. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the Tumblr post, I think, has Fern tweaking his nipples. <laughs> okay. Uh, at some point. Um, but yeah. Oh, and I love uh, Ashton's haiku in the middle of the battle. Where he's all, I'm fucked up, fuck ow, fuck ow, ow. I'm, fuck, I'm really fucked up. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure that qualifies as a haiku. I mean, the syllables are probably there. The, the syllables are there. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm counting it. Also, technically, I suppose it's a death poem because he's facing death. So, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> and yeah, the swallow mechanic continues to be terror inducing. Yeah. Uh, and one of the one of the ways that Matt pulled his punches in the encounter. He was having it do a save when it took damage at all. Yep. And normally swallow mechanics are such that the damage has to be done from inside. Mm. And he was allowing all the external damage to prompt the save. Hmm. Um, so, which... I really want to do a uh, um, evocation wizard build. Either sorcerer multi-class or get the metamagic feat mm -hmm. for careful spell. The metamagic adapt, yeah. Just for the opportunity to be swallowed by a creature and then cast fireball inside the creature and then argue with the DM that they should have disadvantage because it's inside and it's a 20 foot sphere the creature is not 20 feet in size well the next time I run a game and you if you play that I will make sure you get swallowed cool. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see how that plays out <laughs> uh, yeah or Tim if you're watching and you run the next game make sure you get swallowed uh,
It's later that day. I think, I don't think it's after a rest that they meet the other travelers. They come across the campsite. Yeah. I trying to remember. I want to say it was right after the long rest that they took. Yeah, I don't think they had taken another one. Um, and immediately, I'm like, oh. Rival mechanics. This is the other party. Yeah. Uh, and it took them seemingly like what, 20 minutes almost the entire time that they were talking with them until Orm, until they leave, basically. And Orm convinces them to sort of walk behind them. Uh, but I did love the Matt saying, what are the components for detect thoughts? Yep. Uh, because, yeah, it's... It's really easy to forget uh, the components of a spell. Yeah. Super easy. It is. Uh, and the fact that spell casting, while not unusual, mm -hmm. generally has the connotation of shit's about to start. Yeah. And... It well, it's especially easy to forget, especially with, like, clerics and druids and paladins who can change their spells out daily from anything on the list. That's true, too, yeah. You know, because they've got to memorize basically the whole spell list if they're going to be, you know. Yeah. Whereas a wizard just has to know what's in his book. A yeah. sorcerer just has to know the select known spell, same as a bard or a ranger. Yeah. Um, um, but we get a uh, Katari, Egyptian cat looking. Yep. Uh, Katari, a Fearbolg female, mm -hmm. a Dragonborn. Yep. And a goblin. Yep. Male goblin. Uh, I peg the Katari as a ranger. Okay. I, I is my feeling. Uh, the Dragonborn, I think, might be a part. Okay. Um, the Goblin, I'm pretty sure, is a rogue. And the Fearbolg? My thought is Druid. But it could also be... A ranger? Yeah. Uh... But a ranger, druid, bard, rogue party is a pretty powerful mix for doing break-ins. Yeah. Um, if it indeed is the, the other party. Um, and I tend to think that it is. Do you think they were too forward in giving in advertising their they have a group name? Yeah. Uh, yeah, especially when, uh, you know that the other party knows that there's two parties going into this thing. It's a competition. Yeah. Um, I, I subscribe to the theory that a team name should be like the A team. Yes, they were known as the A team, and people looked for the A. But they never said, "Hey, we're the A team," unless it was at the end of the job, and they were like, "We're done. You just got hit by the A team," yeah. or someone tracked them down and was like, 
you wait, you guys with eight team, yeah, and it was a potential. That's what a group name should be. It shouldn't be something you go around telling everybody and their grandma. It's when you finish the job and you're throwing it in their face, you just got smacked down by the Hell's Bell, Bell's Hells. Or wait, you're the Bell's Hells. I'm looking to. Okay, yeah, we are. Let's talk. You, we yeah. might be a client. It's fair. Yeah. And other than that, you should let everybody else talk about the Hell's Be Bell's Hells, not. I was going to say Hell's Bells because the old same, same. Um, the the old song and the old like church propaganda about the evils of rock and roll music. Hell's Bells, you know. Yep. Yep. Uh, that's that's always in my brain. Yep. Same. And I'm I'm sure that they took it and just flipped it to make it work, you know. Yes. But. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. I love the debate over, you know, okay, now that we're here, what do we need to do? Who's going to go where and do what? Mm -hmm. And I love Talos and sort of hanging a lampshade on it. We're going to split the party. Both halves are going to the end. <laughs> yep. We're just going to take two routes to get there and see what happens. Uh, so good. Uh... Ashley. I mean, we sort of joke about them putting their name out to this other group of strangers, but that was minor compared to mm -hmm. the to Ashton's blunder, and a yeah. huge blunder. Yeah. Like, let's not case the joint. Yeah. You know, yeah. Let's my, just my first thought is toss the gutland. My first thought is when you get to town, you don't go and report yourselves right away. You either just go to the museum. You know, if they offer tours, great. Or Take send a, a couple people. Or send a couple people. Hey, just act like your patrons looking at shit. Case the joint. Yeah. Have a couple people inside casing the inside. Have a couple people circle the outside. Case the outside. Yeah. Meet back. Then go announce yourselves. Yeah. Especially, and I. Don't think anyone in the group, in this group, has it. But like last group, especially, send in the people with this guy's self <laughs> under a different guise. Yeah. So that when you then, oh wait, I recognize you. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't think any of them have disguised self. No, but I love the fact that, you know, as you're saying, Ashton blunders and just says it and now I wish I had lied and we had taken it. You know, I'm like, and this is the guy who's saying, do you even cry? Yeah. Obviously you don't, Ashton. Well, I... Unless it's smash and grab. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Ashton's the guy for smash and grab and, and collections. Yeah. Uh... But yeah, I was just like, oh. like, as soon as he was like, yeah, we'll just go tell him. And I'm like, that's no, no. And he's like, yeah, we're here to, we're friends. Uh, we are associates of your friend. You know, and he's like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah. We're hoping to take a tour. Can No. Yeah. You must come in blind. Yeah. And, and his justification was that is I'm horrible at lying. Bitch, Fern's only got a plus one to slide a hand. It hasn't stopped her from stealing half the stuff she's come across. That's true. Oh, that was the other great moment when they're <laughs> when they're meeting the, the new team. Yeah. And, and Fern's like, ooh, the bracelet. Here, let me help you with that. And, we, and Orm's like, don't steal it. Don't steal anything. <laughs> image in your head. Please don't steal anything. And you could tell by Ashley sort of, oh, she was going to try to steal it. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what was about that. Well, I mean. And people say kinders are no fun to play. Ah, kinders are amazing. Uh, Just... 
play a kender to play a kender. Don't play a kender to be an asshole to the other people at the table. That's what gives kenders a bad name. People have this mechanic and use it to be an asshole. Yeah. Never your party members. Uh... Oh, yeah, and they... How long do you think it's going to be before they try and sell FCG? Like, legit try to sell and swindle somebody? It depends on who's there. <laughs> if they split the party and it's FCG, Fern, and Ashen, his ass is getting sold that day. <laughs> If it's with Imogen, no, that's not going to happen. I mean, Fern was ready to sell him. Yeah. Oh, how much are you offering? What's he go for? Like, she's already claimed ownership of him before. Yeah, I own him. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's ready to sell him. And Ashley would be like, all right, fuck it. This might be fun. Well, and it's going to get us a nice chunk of change. because yeah. I think Chetney would probably be willing to go with it, too. But Orin, Orin and Imogen wouldn't, and I'm not sure about Laudna. Mm -hmm. I think Laudna is the one that's on the fence that could be swayed either way. So. If it was, we need cash to do this thing, and this thing will save the world, she would probably go for it. Yeah. Uh, and FCG would, too. I, I think... If it was ever broached, FCG would be like, well, if you think it's best. Do you... Because, uh, see, now I'm thinking, like, as a DM, the party seem open to it. So now I've got to think of a way that... If they're going to do it, that someone who's legit looking to buy him mm -hmm. what that person looks like and the first thing that comes to mind is they can cast Gius and the Gius is you'll do what I say yep. you're mine now it's a lot of damage if he goes against that yeah uh, so, yeah. Basically, the restraining bolt. Uh, yeah. Which does bring up an interesting point hasn't really been talked about, really. And that's uh, the fact that Aormatons were probably bought and sold Yeah. as commodities. They were, they were yeah, a slave race. Yeah. Um, like owning a Roomba. Which really does make me want again, makes me wonder if we're going to see any sort of measure of a man type stuff. I, I think we will. I think whenever we hit FCG's backstory arc is when we'll see it. Okay. Because we've already talked, you know, he's already been talking about, am I alive? Am I not? Yeah. I think you're alive. Well, that's your opinion. Yeah. You know? Um, so I, I think that's definitely... The whole I'm a real boy thing is what's going to come out with FCG's backstory arc. Mm. Widow guess transmogrification. Yeah. Could they use that on FCG? Yes. Okay. 
I couldn't remember if it had to be a living creature or not. I believe it just says a willing creature. Um, we left off with them getting access to the gentleman who was housing the Loomis twins? Yes. Or employing, because it's possible he was employing them, um, or had some other um, arrangement with them. Actually, this is nothing about living or willing. It's just permanently transformed as a humanoid's body into another type of humanoid body. So as long okay. as the construct is considered a humanoid. Uh, no, it's a construct. The Armatons in Warforge are considered constructs? Yeah. Okay, then no, they can't use it on it. At least I'm pretty... Because humanoid is a creature type. Right. And so is construct. Um, like some of the things about Warforge that get around general other construct rules is yeah, your living you're, construct. You're right, because um, yeah, the original UA for Warforged was they're considered both humanoids and constructs. And you had all the pros and cons of both. Mm. Oh, well, that's a good point, too. Yeah, anything that targets a humanoid can target you, basically. Mm-hmm. That was the UA, not the, I don't remember what it's got for the, in the Eberron book for hmm. the official listing for Warforged. I remember the UA was, and then they did that also with like Dampier, which they changed because hmm. they were considered both humanoid and undead and now they're just humanoid. Yeah. Yeah, they've slimmed down on the your like fey and yeah this or yeah, um, yeah they changed that because like the senator is just fey yeah um. but are we really gonna have Sam play characters in back to back campaigns that get altered? To a new species? I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. But I don't think... If they had a wizard in the party... Maybe. Maybe. But they don't. They don't. So I don't think so. I think the closest that's going to happen is he'll go into one of those rebirth chambers, like Devexian did. And get a remodel? Or unlock all the shit that... Sam knows about that he glitches when he tries to talk about. Mm hmm. Yeah. I think that's the closest we'll get. Hmm. Yeah. Just trying to, I'm trying to remember if we ever knew that Aeor had like a fake quarter. I don't think it did. If it did, it's not something we have been privy to. Yeah. Um, and maybe there's, there's, there's the ruins that they found here in the Odirum Wilds may have been a city like Singorn mm -hmm. that crossed over, but also was a flying city. Yeah. 
So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I think the guy that they're talking to, I don't know, Matt seems to be torn. And I understand the feeling that you could have, that this conversation might be a very long one, or it might be a very short one, yeah. depending on how things go and what questions get asked. Um, and I have a feeling it's going to end up being a long one. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's why he decided, we're just going to call it here. Because it's a good spot. Yeah, narratively, to end and pick up next episode, um, and um, I'm struggling to determine whether or not he's going to be particularly helpful in. Because it kind of depends. If he was just there as sort of uh, a friend of the family that they were coming to stay with when they were in the area doing whatever, mm -hmm. then he may not have any information for them at all. If the relationship was they were partners looking for something, yeah, then he could have a lot of information for them. Imogen is there hoping, I think, to find the pages that are missing from that book. I don't think she's going to find them there. No. Uh, yeah, Rose, I... Yeah. My journey of watching this episode was convoluted. Like I talked about, you know, talked about how I missed the first hour. And then, well, I also passed out. Yeah. Shortly after the break. So, Friday at work when I turned it on uh, and caught the beginning fully this time, uh, I missed the same part. Like, I missed some of it too. Mm. Uh, and I didn't quite, but yeah. So I, I watched the end uh, yesterday, I think. Um, finally, because I was just like, I gotta, I gotta piece this together. Right. It's all out of order in my brain, and yeah, the last. Two weeks have been all over the place. I'm hoping yeah. after tax season's over, my brain will stop. Yeah, it, it was rough for me too. This week's kind of been packed, you know, between work and other stuff happening. And I I didn't watch the episode full in one sitting at any one point. So. Yeah. Uh, although I have to say, as much of a crunch as being on daylight savings time is for us on Tuesday nights. Mm -hmm. Thursdays is so much easier. Yeah. I can... Like, the reason I, I fell asleep Thursday wasn't because I was trying, like, mad to stay up to watch the episode. It was I was just wrecked and just fell asleep. Um, in fact, I think I was falling asleep in my chair. And I was like, if I, if I stay here, my neck's going to be wrecked. So I just got in bed, and then uh, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Like, I remember what, we come back from break, we're getting, and I remember this, them meeting the other group, 
and I don't remember them getting to the town. Yeah. And, and for me, it's almost the opposite because, like, when it starts earlier for our time, I miss more of it because I usually close on Thursdays. Yeah. Um, but usually what I do, just depending on where my sleep is at, you know, because I have sleep issues, but I'll either wait till midnight and watch it all, like, the first four or five hours of Friday mm. on the, the first on broadcast. demand. Yeah. Either the first free broadcast or I'll just oh. wait and click the video on demand. Right, right. Um, or I'll watch it Friday after work. Friday night after work, usually. Yeah. But, you know, through, through the weekend, I'm typically Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I'm, you know, between 10 and 12 hours mm. at the restaurant each day. Yeah. So, Rose asks, yeah. who was our MVP? Now, I joked about, you know, round one, 10 minutes into the episode, naming Laura my MVP. Yeah. But I think that's kind of a stretch, but also maybe not. Um, in the sense that she sort of drove investigating the ruins. Mm. She took her samples and... You could tell she wanted to go talk to our guy mm -hmm. real bad, but didn't wanna didn't wanna take control, as it were. Yeah. Um, For me, I think it's a toss-up between Laura and Taliesin. And Taliesin mostly because he made so many, like, foot-in-mouth. And for me, it was <laughs> Taliesin. Casing the joint. It, it was Ashton. And just... He... I mean, he took a step back in some scenes, but for the most part for the episode, it felt like he was the unspoken leader. The spokesperson of the group mm. in a lot of ways and even from the ending of the last episode when he's like i go to check on fern you know um yeah he was he kind of took point in that's fair a lot of the points throughout the episode and stuff so a ashton got my vote Talison. because it feels like Sometimes he steps up in the leader and Orem's the quiet leader. It's like they have the Orem and Ashton have the Caleb Ford thing going, but it's not as talked about. It just kind hmm. of happens naturally. Interesting. Again, kind of weird that the the charisma casters Aren't the Not faces. the face. <laughs> well, yeah. when one of your charisma casters is undead, is yeah, undead, and the other has a fear of crowds, <laughs> doesn't like interacting with people because they have mental breakdowns. It kind of makes sense. Fair. Yeah. But then, for me, my brain, the default is the wisdom people, because they have the insight. Mm. The naturally good insight. Fair. But. And no one should listen to what Fern wants. <laughs> or Sam. <laughs> I don't care who he's playing. <laughs> Let's just look at FCG, Tarion, not Veth. Scanlan? Fair. <laughs> you know, there there's certain players... Well, to a degree, every player has a type. Yeah. Whether that... And that's I'm not necessarily talking about class or race, but specific things come out, you know? Yeah. 
Well, it's like, it's the, what piece of you is in this character? Yeah. And a lot of people put the same piece. Yeah. Uh, it's like Liam with sad boys. Yeah. Uh, Rose Ashton takes control when things get too chaotic. Yeah. And Liam takes charge when they need to be careful. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly. And I think part of that is is Talison. I, I think a big part of it, especially with these two, is the fact that they're the two most experienced players. Other than Matt. No, that's fair. Um, they've both been playing since high school, at minimum. Yeah. And if I remember right, they're also the two oldest members of the group. Jeez. I know Taliesin is definitely the oldest. I believe Liam is either second or third oldest. Yeah. Um, and the two of them and Matt have all been playing since they were in high school. Not together, but yeah. playing. Whereas Marisha started playing after she met Matt. And pretty much everyone else started playing at Liam's birthday party. Yeah. Except for Ashley had played before too. Yeah. That's fair. So it's, it's yeah, the two that have the most years playing that are being the leaders this time around. Yeah, and Taliesin seems to be... So Bill Cosby had a bit in himself, I think is the name of the special, yeah. where he's talking about every night at his house. Talks about what goes on and how the children are allowed to listen to their music while dinner's going. Mm -hmm. and he's like, my wife has the ability to know when they have eaten as much as they're going to eat. She says, all right, that's enough. Bath time. And Taliesin seems to have that ability, a similar ability, to when everyone around the table is just going in circles now. Yeah. Circling some idea or whatever, and he's just like, all right, this Let's is what do we're it. doing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think Taliesin... is the least afraid to lose a character. That's fair. Um, especially because, like, he's the only one that lost one early in the campaign, you know? Yeah. Uh And Travis, I don't count losing Bertrand as yeah, because that was plain. Yeah. Um. But, but. Yeah. And Travis just always wants to be doing something, especially when it gets them closer to combat. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> that was. I don't know. It was a. Uh, I was gonna say a sweet moment, but that's not the right word. Just his his joyfulness that combat was starting at the beginning of the episode was yeah nice. Um, Travis's willingness to lose Chetney, I think, in part is because he lost Bertrand and it was planned. And also because he's playing a blood hunter. I, I think it's between the blood hunter and the fact that he seems to be leaning into the guy who will push the red button. Mm -hmm. Well, that's been him. Yeah. Forever. So. That, that's been him forever, but he seems to be putting that as 
almost a core thing for this character. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Anyway, uh, we'll see where, how much, how hot on the heels of the Loomis twins they can get, and whether or not the heist is one episode or two. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking it's going to be one, with complications moving into the second. I think it's going to be two. Mm -hmm. With that, uh, we will bid you adieu. Have a good night.